things I learned while living in Tanzania. It's been like one year. Let's set this up. Let's get comfortable because I might be here for a while. Hey everybody, I'm Carly. If you don't know me, let's get this list going. I wrote some of these things down maybe like uh, some months ago. I was just writing YouTube video ideas down, but it had been a long time. And like, why not do something special for my little anniversary, which is basically like April 4th. I landed in Tanzania April 4th. If you follow me on Instagram, then you saw my little celebration post. But I'm going to maybe wait for some of y'all to come before I really get into the list. But it will be up later for whoever misses it. So welcome to the live. We are just going to wait for a second, feel the breeze. I am currently in Arusha. Uh, yeah, currently in Arusha. I think I'll be here for a little while longer. Maybe to like you know sometime july now if it get too cold i was thinking maybe i need to go to dar should i go to dar salon should i just go somewhere warmer i know some of y'all might say kenya but i'm scared of immigration people i don't have no connects at namanga okay i don't have no i don't have no real connects i hope y'all can hear me over this wind today <clears throat> Oh, and today is holiday. Today is Eid, Eid Barak. Um, I don't really know what exactly we celebrate today. I'm going to be honest, but I just know last year when I got here, I got invited to like a couple parties. That's okay, let's go. Why not? And that was like the most I ever seen people in Arusha like really cut up. And I was like, ooh, y'all wild out here. Y'all are wild. But it was a good time. Everybody had good energy for the holidays. And you never know, like, this is not a, like a real Muslim. We back. Welcome back, Ari Busana. You are very welcome. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm saying in Dar es Salaam or like Zanzibar, that means, uh, you know, there's more Muslim people there. So I'm sure people in the streets, people dress real nice. Everybody may be going out. But I even seen some of the ladies here, some of the Muslim ladies here dress nice. Like taking their little reels, taking their pictures for Instagram, Facebook. They all look so nice. I like seeing the, they, um, I don't know what to call it. Like it's like they wear, I don't even know. Okay, let me get back. If I can find the list, y'all know in the notes app, it's just so much so many notes in the notes app all i do is put things in my notes if somebody ever steal my phone that's the only thing i really be sad about my note because my whole life my whole life is in here okay so we won't drag it too long on the intro for everybody who's gonna watch it later uh so yeah moving to tanzania uh, this is what I learned living here after one year. I didn't completely live here the whole year. Like maybe I traveled to Kenya for like two months or kind of total three months going around to different places. And yeah, other times I was here in Tanzania. I've been to, I've been to Bukoba. I've been to Moshi. I've been to Dar. I've been to even, uh, okay, Zanzibar, yeah. And I've been to like Karatu, I've been to some of the national parks, you know, just traveling around, doing everything. But really, what I really like, what I really got the most value out of is living here in one spot, living here in a place that's not a big city. Arusha is not a big city. And it's like, okay, if I move to Nairobi, then I have some more comforts that I'm used to. But here it's like kind of small. 
not a big town if you're from georgia it's kind of like moving to augusta when dar is like atlanta but really arusha smaller than augusta i'm just trying to make a comparison it's like okay you will leave atlanta and then you go to uh chattahoochee hills or you go to what am i thinking of not even sandy springs like oh my god oh excuse me i got something in my eye okay so yes number one we're gonna talk about like wi-fi and internet and everything so here they call internet like any type of communication phone line messaging they call it bundles and i just knew like when i came here like okay if i try to buy wi-fi it's gonna be cheaper no it was not cheaper wi-fi does exist um it costs a good amount a lot and honestly uh i end up paying more for internet and like phone service here i think than in the u.s but of course everything else is cheaper so it kind of balanced out and really is just still better here if wi-fi is the only thing i'm really paying for it's because i'm always online y'all see me on here how can i post a big 3gb file video without using all my bundles uh yeah bundles all i use is bundles bundles and more bundles every week bundles um how much does it cost i think it costs like 25 dollars or like 40 dollars for i think 50 gb something like that but i just run through that like the main ones that use the most internet are like TikTok, YouTube, uh, maybe Facebook, like anything where you're watching videos and consuming a lot, that's gonna take up your bundles and you're gonna be blowing money. And yeah, my first uh my first week here or whatever, my first couple weeks, I was like, dang, I need to I need to get rid of screen time. Like screen time needs to go way down. Cause there is no way I'm about to be but of course I just I was already spending more initially when I got here anyway. So having that added on top, I was like, oh, this is too much. I need a budget if I'm gonna stay here for a long time, like a good budget, okay? So the next thing I learned is don't shop at the supermarket too much. There's so many things that when I finally figured out how to shop like in my area or on my street, yeah, I learned, oh, this stuff is not even that expensive. Not me paying maybe $4 for something in the store or on the street, it might be like $1. That's a big saving. That's a real big saving. Uh, let's say like different spices. Uh, yeah, don't go to the store for like rice or don't go to the store for no ugali flour. That was was the first thing like not me buying ugali flour for i think i checked it the last time i went to shoppers it might have been like eight thousand something like that but really you can go to any place on the street any shop any stand and the ugali is like one dollar you see the difference that's a big difference and then uh yeah like not eating local food I didn't know what to do. I'm, I was used to American food. Of course, I would try like like nyama choma and stuff and rice and beef if I would go out. I even had ugali, I think, uh, maybe my first week here. Yeah, somebody shook. They took me to this place and I tried like umnafu. I tried pork umnafu and ugali. And I was like, oh, this is, this is good. But I really didn't even cook ugali until much later much much later but yeah basically all of these things that you know all of these small things like green vegetables meat ugali oil even you can get it for cheaper at a local shop versus the supermarket you save so much money if you're moving out here yeah you'll be able to stay for a long time if somebody can like really just help you and guide you like how to live local i still don't live like a hundred percent 
like a local, but you know, I try. I try. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, and going to the main markets, try to go with somebody who speaks Swahili, make a friend, join. Kipedi. Yeah, I try Kipedi in uh nah, Naivasha, I think. Was my first time trying the and I like the taste, but I don't like a uh, hard corn. I miss uh, yellow corn from the United States. Now, it might have a GMO. It might be genetically modified. <laughs> but still, uh, I miss yellow corn because the corn here, I just see that it's usually white. And maybe one day I'll try to boil it and see how long I need to boil it for it to be soft. How about that? And then I'll do my own spinner on the gifted. Because I already like beans. I like beans. I do like corn. Everything is good. Thank you, John Mina. And thank you for joining the live. Okay. Uh, yeah, speaking, trying to speak the local language, going around with people who know the language. You can kind of study them, learn how they move, see how they negotiate price do all of those things and it's like okay you get your little training you get your practice especially if you're somebody like me who never i'm not african by you know i'm not african i don't have no cousins living in ghana or i you know i don't have nothing like that basically first time coming here was just traveling and you know i came as a tourist and I even landed here again as a tourist. The most knowledge I had was from watching people's YouTube videos, like who lived here. And with them explaining it, like I see now, like they can only explain it as much as they can try to put it in words. Because even going through, like it don't really feel, it don't feel the same unless you literally like walking through a market here. Like now you hear everything you see everything and then okay now you can see how like people be watching you or people reaction to you you can watch somebody on a youtube video going around but it's not the same so you have to come yeah so the big thing is i would say no amount of preparation would have prepared me for like you know the culture shock and everything else here somebody could tell me but i had to learn everything on my own basically yeah just figure out how to maneuver here it took a lot of time when i first got here i was even looking back through my posts like uh oh yeah i'm adjusting it's taking like one month baby i think it took like I don't know maybe four months like really it probably took a good four months then maybe six months i felt like okay i feel a little bit more comfortable like i feel settled a little settled here but still i wanted to like travel around and go places but like my home area like, okay i feel comfortable here but still no routine but like, it took more time now i feel like i have more of a routine i feel I'm a local girl, I'm a local Tanzanian. This is what I feel like. But well, you see, it took one year, trials and tribulations. A lot of trials and tribulations. Okay, what else we got? Oh yeah, that brings me to things I learned in Tanzania. You need people. You're not gonna get anywhere. I think anywhere on the African continent. I ain't even been everywhere, but I'm sure. If you here, you need people. This is not a place you can just, oh, I'm independent, I do everything alone, and I'm a loner here. Impossible. Because you need somebody to look out for you. You need to make connections here. You need to have genuine friends here. You building a life in another place. So you kind of have to, you have to do all those things and really get in with the culture you only do that by knowing people the people are the culture how can you do that in like a in a vacuum you can't do it in a vacuum or in a box in your in your nice uh expat community in your nice area who are you meeting 
if it's only eggs that surround you. They can be a help to you, but still not like people who are really from here. And I really like meeting people here as long as they nice, cool. But the tip is be be wary of people. If you meet them, I notice like I can meet people here and it's not like I don't have as much ease as I do at home because I've learned now some people, everybody is not out to just be your friend. They might be looking for something. They might think you have money. They might think you just got a big opportunity for them. That's not true. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't have any money. I'm trying to make opportunity for myself. Like, okay, maybe if I grew, then yeah, I can give people an opportunity. But right now, the automatic assumption is that I have an opportunity to give. But yes, the main thing is be wary of people don't get close to anybody fast at all. Uh, I know in the U.S., maybe it's just because I know how people move there. So any behavior that I would see at home okay i can clock that easy be like oh no this is not somebody i want to be affiliated with at all here when i first moved here it was like uh oh, you know maybe i met some people but i didn't know the extent of let's say what they into or what, what type of personality they have i had to get to know people from here to see okay people from here of course they're all different this is a different culture they're from a different place they all have a different background than me so i have to i had to learn how to gauge like basically like society gauge in society if somebody is like maybe doing okay for themselves are they even looking at you for opportunity or anything like that are they trying to take advantage of you in any way or basically are they genuine because i met plenty of people here who just want to be friends or they just want to know you that's cool with me but people who try to get close fast or who try to like kind of sell you something or trying to maybe try to get you in business with them quickly don't do it yeah just follow your intuition pay attention i would say vet people for even two three months don't give away too much information you'll just see with time if there's somebody you can trust and yeah that leads me to uh you can meet somebody friend whatever and unless you've been around school, like unless you've really explored here you won't know the real how people live okay let's say you land you get your airport transfer and then you go directly to your airbnb and then your airbnb host is helping you they tell you what restaurant to go to as like a new person like a foreigner when you in that bubble uh even if your airbnb is like in a nice place basically like you will not know the reality of how people live like unless somebody maybe invites you to their home or you see people walking on the street like people can be even dressed nice or just like normal casual but you will never know like okay they don't even have maybe running water in their house they only spend a few a few thousand shillings per day their wages per day like then you see oh like yeah this is not easy like you don't know people's struggles until you meet them and then along with people's struggles are people who can maybe be desperate like it's not even nothing against you as a foreigner but okay you clearly got money you blew money here you was able to even come here on a flight some people never even get to really ride in a car but you you know you in a whole nother country so you got money to them and like you really do especially with currency exchange one dollar to me is dinner to somebody or somebody can maybe make uh dinner for their family with like two dollars three dollars in one day there's everything to them so just realize where you are realize uh yeah the reality of 
like the wages and the money here. Everybody is not struggling. Everybody is not in poverty. And really people, they can be living that lifestyle, but they can always eat. A lot of people always have food because they grow it or they have cows, they have land. Yeah. But they, they, you know, it's a lot of humble people here. They're not really trying to even get nothing from me. They see me a foreigner on the street. Nobody trying to, not everybody trying to get something from me. They're living their life as normal. So, yeah. Just be aware of people's budget. You blowing, I didn't even realize how much I was doing. Okay, I'm blowing 20K on pizza. 20k now i even look at the pizza and be like i don't need that let me go make some rice let me go make some ugali i'm gonna make some now i'm making green bananas look at me now i'm making green bananas and that's great 20k i can eat for like a lot of days really a lot of days maybe a week of 20k mm -hmm. if i do meat like if i do meat like one time out of the week and eat it for a few days i can stretch it in tanzania in kenya i don't know i never really lived there and did my shopping there so i don't know how far like eight to ten dollars will get me um oh yeah another thing i'm glad i like how i wrote this list so i'm saying that most likely you will not be robbed by anybody most likely no here in Arusha, unless you just really looking real foreign, you looking real lost, um, you in the wrong place, wrong time, are you out after dark? Maybe that could lead you to getting your phone snatched or just some money off of you. But more likely than not, nobody's about to just come up to you. You know, of course not with a G. I don't know if I can say this on live, but a G-U-N, nobody is coming with a doo doo. And nobody is coming with a, you know, they're not coming to get you like that. They probably just gonna just say, give me the phone or try to snatch it from you. I say here, people try to be more sneaky with taking something. Just more sneaky. Maybe if you got your bag open on the bus or something. If your bag is open, big bag, like a big purse for ladies. Don't show your money, but if you're not paying attention, maybe you're looking over here. Yeah, somebody might just dig in there. Why not? Why not? It's an opportunity. It's money. It's good money too. Ten thousand. If you got ten showing, I might be tempted to take it if I'm struggling. I never been in that position, so I can't say. But basically, yeah, follow the same safety tips that you do around the world. Just be aware. Be very aware. Okay, uh, you should learn the correct price range for things. It's another sneaky way that people can get money off you. If you don't know the price, yeah, they go hike it up like three times the price, ten times the price. You know, this one lady, I never forget this was very on, very early on. She tried to sell me like six bananas, maybe six thousand. Six thousand. It don't even cost that much in the U.S. for six bananas. Girl, what? I was like, oh, I see. But if I was new and I didn't know, I would just hand over the six thousand. Like, okay, a couple dollars, whatever. Whatever. You see? Yeah, they'll try to get it from you like that. Excuse me, like that. Uh, definitely local places but if uh, if you with a guide um, you're good they can do all the talking for you if you alone try to take your list and try to learn as many Swahili words as you can like think about your full transaction before you go and be like okay Naomba like can I have this or and then say the amount or you can just play it off too and just be like okay this you know because a lot of times here i know that people here can act real cool about things sometimes like okay like in the u.s if i go to somebody's store or something i have to say like okay hey how are you doing thank you so much yeah i want to get this i want to get that blah 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 and 
yeah, it's like you gotta go through so many little doo -doo 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 just for the interaction. But here, you can walk up to the stand and you can say, like, she come on if it's an older person. And then, you know, they're gonna stand there and look at you kind of straight, like, it's very straight, like, what do you want? Clearly, you're here to buy something, so just say what you need. So, yeah, I started to try to play it off like that, like, okay, point that this, like, hmm, like, let me, let me get two of them, like this, two, and this. Okay, like now I just I recently even learned how to say yes these like this or these like nahi nahi dili you know and these tattoo something like that but it's not much talking it don't have to be because I see other people around in the area they just walk up real chill real cool about it they even may say mambo and then look off like this like after they give their request. And then snatch the money and go. It's not a big, I don't know. It's not too formal or anything. Okay. Um, hand, oh, hand washing. Things I learned. How to hand wash more clothes. Now, in the U.S., of course, I, I hand washed some things before. Maybe just like delicates or like a nice linen shirt or if I got a stain. But I definitely wasn't going like this or... <laughs> that's new so yeah the most hand wash i would do is like you know like a light like i can't even say cotton like a linen shirt is something i would do but now okay like all the underwear the socks and everything you know you can't give that away to somebody to wash at least i don't feel comfortable a lot of people don't so yeah i learned how to wash those first oh my god i wish i recorded some of this stuff because the way y'all would have been laughing at me y'all would have been laughing at me so bad because first i put so much soap in the in the basin baby do you know how long i was rinsing everything up <laughs> i'm up here rinsing like how i got a, just one sock and i'm rinsing it just rinsing it and you know what that means for jeans you know what that means for your shirts tried to even wash a sheet and that was my last time trying to wash a sheet like no just no too much soap is real bad all them bubbles and you're gonna be rinsing all day and at that point I said, if i ever put too much soap again it's just gonna be stiff it's gonna be sticky and stiff it'll wear off throughout the day like maybe let the sun if i move around in my clothes maybe it'll be fine uh yeah so hand washing is tough it's tough uh i found uh somebody who could wash them for me and you know i just paid them maybe i tried to have them come once a week but i'm not always like uh i don't have no set schedule so i can't say okay come monday at 8 a.m i'll be there maybe i am there but maybe next monday i'll be asleep my clothes not ready to give away but yeah giving them away is one thing oh and hand wash clothes and line drying get ready to line dry and if your line drying area is not covered get ready to run out there in anything run out there looking crazy as soon as that rain start you be snatching them clothes putting them in the in the basin or a bucket or something it was just too crazy when i first moved here i'm like oh my god it's raining oh is that rain or if you out somewhere, you don't put the clothes up to dry, and you be like, oh, my clothes are. <laughs> so imagine you don't finally rinse all the soap out your clothes. You don't run them until you can't run them no more. Now I'm stronger. Now I'm stronger with the ringing. I try to get as much out as I can, but still, doing all of that just for the rain to rehydrate the clothes excuse me you know that just made me want to cry really that hand washing is not for me um the other thing is like in my first airbnb the the water went out for some days uh i was just like i don't know what to do you know i didn't know what to do but then the whole state sent somebody with uh water 
like water in buckets, like buckets of water, buckets of water, bringing them inside my Airbnb. And I'm like, okay, well, I got to ration this. But I mean, luckily I wasn't cooking. I wasn't really cooking at home when I first came here. So it wasn't a big, big deal. But as far as like taking a bath, okay, now I got to boil the water. And then, okay, it'll be real hot. So, you know, it's good. It don't take that much water for a bucket bath. And I was like, dang, this really taking me back. I feel like I'm boiling water on the stove at my grandma's house. And then, you know, filling it up in the tub. I said, well, luckily it wasn't nothing too crazy. It just was something that I didn't do in a long time. Uh, yeah, the water was out for some days. That was, I think that was the main struggle when I first came. And then, oh, and it was because... Uh, there was something with the water like yeah they had i think they had the tank but maybe something else happened with the regular water that comes like from the pipes i can't remember what happened it was a year ago now and the power the power was going out y'all i didn't know about no tokens like you can just proceed to laugh at me because i'm sitting in the house the fan not working I'm starting to sweat like so let's say I go to sleep take a nap and I just wake up like oh my god I'm sweating to death <laughs> I wake up in a deep sweat because the power went out the fan not blowing on me uh, the blanket is thick it's hot outside and it's hot in the place anyway because it's no AC like uh, yeah I came around this time so like sun blaring in the windows in these places it's not really in a, any ventilation the most ventilation in the house could be like a block at the top of the wall and then there's um you can open the window you can open the door like in my little my little area like there was maybe five other apartments and yeah people just have their door open and that was real different to see but of course i see why it's hot up in these houses it's like you know it's as soon as you start to cook in one of these type of apartments it's hot like you about to start sweating the walls are sweating nah so yeah i was saying the power will go out anytime any place but like it's like it's so random it's just so random and yeah the tokens thing the tokens was out at that first place that's the point i was trying to get to but i didn't know so when i finally told my host I'm like yeah the power is out again i don't know why i didn't come back yet he like oh you should tell me you're just supposed to tell me and then okay they have somebody put you know put my money on the account like you can pay for your electricity through an app on your phone you don't even need the app on your phone to do it you could just dial the little code and then okay say i want to pay my put some money on my electricity and then you pay for electricity like that by usage like maybe i'll put uh 40 000. i think the last time i put i just put 40 000 on there that's less than 20 dollars and it lasted me like three months I think three months but that's amazing y'all know that's amazing in the summertime that power can go up like hundreds so what's twenty dollars and that's yeah if i was using a shower like now yeah if i use the shower the refrigerator maybe microwave here and there i might use more money on gas i don't know just cooking more now but anyway okay uh, oh yeah big thing the main thing let, let me give y'all this leg cross the main thing i learned living in Tanzania, and after this goes in africa you need patience please have patience don't come with a quick temper don't come with a bad attitude don't come with no disrespect that i just don't see that going well for you you'll leave like two weeks you'll be done finished 
going back home or going somewhere else where you feel just 100% more comfortable, at least 80% more comfortable with things you used to. Uh, just have patience. A lot of things are not here. Like just a lot of different systems we have in the US, they're just not here. Or just the way people do things a different way. When you first come, you might be questioning now, why are they doing something like this? Wouldn't it be easier if, wouldn't it be faster if, but it could be a reason, but you don't know that because you're new. Uh, yeah, just a lot of things is going to require patience. And especially having a language barrier, have patience with people trying to have patience with you. Um, just patience. Things are very slow or they can go very slow in Tanzania. Even now, I'm trying to conduct more uh, like interactions for the travel agency. And, oh boy, y'all don't understand. I can ask, I already told my family this if my sister's still watching. I can ask somebody five questions on an email or on a WhatsApp message for anything. Even just for getting my hair done, if I want to find a hairstylist, I can ask five questions. They might just say hello. They might not even answer no questions at all. And I just be like, what can I do but repeat? What can I do but repeat? Mm -hmm. And then, okay, maybe I ask five questions, they answer one. And then it's the one that is, okay, this still not really helping. I just be like, do y'all want business? Do you want any business? And you can say the same for, like, maybe a restaurant. Oh, yeah, that's another thing. You go to a restaurant, and, yeah, they have... Let, let me pause that right there you go to a restaurant you ask me for the menu they don't have a menu so many places don't have a menu when i first came i was struggling because i don't know everything so it's easy if i can see the words and then maybe i can google pictures or see what's in it so i don't have to go back and forth or have the waitress struggle like if she don't know english and me struggle because i don't know so huge. like yeah let's cut the back and forth but there's no menu so i had to learn the hard way to just be listening you go to a place you know they're gonna tell you what they have at the moment they're gonna tell you what they have today so they'll say okay we got yama samaki wavi uh vegetables they'll say that they have all of these things oh my god i used to be struggling so bad because let's say maybe the only thing i knew was yama or cuckoo and they just say okay uh cuckoo and then okay now we get into the uh like okay what do you want how do you want it? you want a grill you want a fry how much do you want and i'm like I don't know. It takes a lot of patience, but real the main thing about that is you can see even if somebody do have a menu or something that you ordered at a place before, you can get there at that moment. They don't have it. They don't have it ready. Do you want to wait for the food? Do you have time to wait for the food? Or you just need to go to another place because it's out for the day. It's always uh, not not me and my Lisa. It's uh. Uh, I don't know if somebody watching this can you help me it's like Imaisha, Imaisha or something like that basically they saying it's finished it's finished it's finished I can say okay Pilau is finished Chai it's finished like they'll just say no don't have this don't have this don't have this it's like well shoot what do you have but you know you can't talk too much like that it's just a normal thing uh yeah another thing is people will be curious about you living here and as soon as they see your accent is different you know it piqued their interest now they're ready to ask you more and more questions where are you from where are you from what are you doing here now i don't really appreciate the ones where they say okay where do you live and do you live alone I don't really appreciate that one because it usually comes from men. That's a no-go. 
Um, but yeah, people will just ask, yeah, what are you doing here? And yeah, another one is they'd be curious about how you able to do it. So basically about money. They'll want to ask you about money. Um, like, oh, you, uh, you must really got it like that. You out here? I'm like, y'all just don't understand. Y'all just don't understand. I don't have it like anything. <laughs> I'm trying to get it. Okay. Ooh. What's this next one I got? As a woman. As a woman. Oh, yes. Here is a different place. It's very conservative in Arusha. Uh, less conservative, less conservative in other places. Nairobi, not as you know. So whatever, it's the city. Dar es Salaam, still more conservative. Maybe the only difference is ooh, it's a bird right here. Sorry. Uh, the only difference is uh, it depends on your timing. Like if you're going out at night to the clubs. Yeah, you can wear something like that. But when you wear something like that, that means everything needs to be taken care of for you. Like your transportation, it's better to have somebody driving you that you know. Or if you have like, if you're using boat or something in the city, then okay, you'll probably be more okay. But even then, it's like, you got to think about you're going to be standing outside somewhere in a short dress or like with your cleavage out and it's... Do you want the attention? In the US is nothing. Nobody really cares. Men can see you. Okay, they have seen plenty of you before. They see plenty of women with everything out. Even way more out than you. Women basically be naked in the US. Shoot, I used to be too. Sometimes. <laughs> I miss wearing whatever I want to wear, to be honest. But here, it's better to be safe than anything because you never know what type of person is like maybe trying to drive you never know who your boater person is you don't know who the driver is uh and it's untrackable like it's untraceable that's the thing about it here in the u.s okay they can at least you know get they they, they already got all the information something can happen to them you can find them even if they made you feel uncomfortable you can report that but a boater driver or a, a tutu driver after he drives you, or if he does something to you, you don't know him. You cannot find him. You'll never see. Because you get in the thing, and you know, you hop in. You can just hop in. You're not really even seeing your face unless you check in the mirror. Like, so yeah, just be careful. You don't want too much attention from men here. It's a different set of rules and laws and just culture let me just say culture it's a different culture here so be wary or go to places where maybe it's kind of i don't know like for me uh, i hate to say like for me okay maybe i look tanzanian so maybe somebody will treat me one way versus okay a white person coming here with just like a little tank top or a crop top and shorts nobody really cares but if you look like a local person like me then they expect you to carry the culture and through the same thoughts and understanding that you need to be covered or you know older women can look at you like like what are you wearing you need to fix your clothes men will just look at you stare at you whistle at you like dogs <laughs> and i don't like attention i really don't i just like if i like to wear something cute then i just like to wear something cute never for men to be you know and here and i just feel like there's more men out here like if you're walking down like more people people are out and around in these cities and towns like people walk what? people are driving by on boaters people are in town like selling things there's a lot of people moving around the city even like arusha even though it's small if you go to town okay yes yeah, plenty of people in that area and yeah that's just not what you want to do it just seemed like so much more attention but really i think 
maybe I just come across more people here in the everyday or if I'm going out. And yeah, just the culture of people like kind of hanging around, like this is their normal spot they sit at. They sit here every day. And then if they see you that one day in that short dress or something like that, they are going to remember you. They're going to remember your reaction to them. And now every time you pass by, that's your friend now. <laughs> and you can tell people that you are not interested. Uh, you can frown at them. I know I look at people all the time like, do this look happy to see you? Does my face look interested at all? Not at all. Not in the slightest. Especially maybe like, Let's say it's this old man on my street. Every day or every time he sees me is, you know, maybe whistling, even. Yes, you're welcome. <laughs> they always want to, they be like, baby, baby, this, this, and that. You saw me yesterday, I paid you no mind. I saw you every day, every other day, I paid you no mind. And here you go again. I think he an alcoholic. And he just don't have nothing else to do. So yeah, a lot of people just don't have nothing to do. Um, I think in, I think in Dar, or like even Nairobi, people go more about their business. Like there's so many people around, nobody is worried about you. But Arusha is a small place, so they saw you, they see you often, they remember you. It's a good thing and a bad thing. I think mostly it's good mostly but the only bad thing is like okay this the same person the same person annoying you with that what? so yeah just mind your clothes mind how you move um here i don't really i don't even look at men or smile at men it's like an invitation mm -mm. in the u.s you can smile at a man and he still don't come <laughs> they'll be surprised they'll be like but these be ready, they be on go. Yes, the next one is learn. Another thing I learned living in Tanzania, I've learned some Swahili. And it's best to be prepared for language immersion because that's what it is i still struggle with swahili i can understand people more now especially like in context but yeah i learned some swahili here i think i'll be much better and better over time especially speaking with people that kind of have like a mixed level so maybe if they can't explain something to me in English, then they start to say in Swahili, and that really helps. And I like to be nosy sometimes. Uh, I like to hear sometimes what people are saying around me, but not even to be nosy, it's just to be safe, like, because people can be saying anything, like, people can be saying anything about you, anything. There was this instance, uh, I was walking with somebody on the street and then I think, like I see clearly, the person assumed that my friend, that they did not know Swahili because, you know, they walk in with me, they must know English at least. But, oh yeah, and his style was like different, like okay, maybe he was American. But after that interaction or whatever, the person told me, oh, this man just said something wild about you, like, to his friend. And I'm like, he said what? What? Somebody that I assumed was just like, okay, cool. Like, it was really an acquaintance, but somebody who was only respectful, what? They would say something crazy like that. And then it's like, you know, they smile and everything. You don't know what they said. So yeah, get ready to learn some Swahili, you should learn it, it's very important here. In Kenya, maybe you, you can get by in Kenya, can really get by. In Dar, I know people, more people speak English, I think, I think, like it's easier to go in a, go in a place and communicate with people for the few times I went there. Um, yeah, there's, 
Another thing I learned that there's so many transportation options. Now, when I'm planning to go somewhere, anything I do, like if I have a plan, my plan for the day even, I can say, okay, I want to go do this. I want to go to the store. I want to stop by here and I want to stop by there. Is you got to think and plan your day, especially if you want to save money on transportation. Like, Okay, maybe to get like to the street, get to the main road, maybe I can walk or take a boat. After that, maybe I need to take the dollar dollar, which is just like the public bus. After that, okay, when I'm carrying, when I have more things in my hands or something maybe I feel is valuable, I don't know. After that, maybe I need to take a boat to get to the next place. Or if it's, if I'm buying a lot of things, Okay, now I need to take a tutu to get to here to there and then think about price. A tutu costs more than a boat. Like, it's just a lot of ways to get around. A lot of ways to get around. And it's better to plan your day without, especially trying to save money. And, yeah, transportation. I have a tip, like, yeah, be careful of hailing bodas or tutus. Be very careful. Just try to examine the person a little bit before you just hop on. A lot of people be drinking too much. Uh, it's a lot of alcoholics out here. Like, maybe they done had something to drink you. Some of them you won't even know. I was told recently, like, somebody in my area, yeah, they be drinking a lot. And of course, I didn't notice until one day. I'm saying like, oh, hey, how you doing? And like, just to look at his face, I'm like, are you okay? <laughs> are you okay? But yeah, if I just walked into him like normal, maybe I'm in a rush and just been like, okay, yeah, like I already know you. You can take me somewhere, but just pay attention and be safe. I learned to just pay more attention because I think like uh, maybe my first time being a tourist in Nairobi or wherever. Okay, yeah, I just got on the boat. Maybe I was using Uber first. I don't know. I might have been using Uber first in Nairobi, but maybe after I learned, I probably was just like, okay, I know you can just literally just walk up, pick a boat man. They'll look at you, you make eye contact like this. Yeah, that's your ride. They'll come to you. They can come to you from way down the road. They'll be looking up like, you need a ride? And shoot, I'll be looking like that too, especially if it's hot. If I'm hot, I'm walking, I'm like, you know, boaters around here? Like, help me. Okay. Uh, yeah, something, that drinking thing in Arusha. Arusha, I can't really say. There are a lot of people who drink too much here. So many. I'm like, y'all are, y'all are out too often, like too often getting lit. Why are you drunk three days out the week? I mean, I could attribute that to, to like some people I met when I came here, they was a little bit younger, but still, yeah, I see every range like kind of out in the bars. Like me, okay, you know, I didn't have a job. I was just trying to feel, feel my way around when I first got here. I'm out, I'm outside, but I'm not drinking. <laughs> I've, I was out often, but I was definitely not drinking often. So that allowed me to see like dang i seen you in here like a few times this week you lit like you got 10 beers are you okay are you okay it's a big drink culture and especially with entertainment there's not much entertainment uh in arusha and a lot of people yeah maybe they just kind of yeah oh you in malindi Yes, I heard they like to uh, drink too, that they like to party, they party all night, uh, but I never lived there or never stayed going out consistent enough to even see like how wild do they be, how wild do it get, I don't know, I've never seen nothing crazy going out there. Uh, 
uh, but also that's because let's say Nairobi you can go to more I had to like say like classy or something versus just like local but there's way more options for that in Nairobi definitely and you will never come into contact with people who just be around or just be on the street uh, don't really work or something like that but here in Arusha yeah, it's a lot of people like that they don't really do maybe they don't do much or even if they do want to like go out and have a night out there's no like there's no game like fun type place like uh dave and busters there's no that there's not many concerts there's like there's no not many events like to really have them do that versus just kind of do nothing and meet up with friends and drink meet up with friends and i don't know whatever but i know people do kind of just gather like there are good good people with good habits who gather and just hang out talk with their friends and everything which i need to do more of just been in the house busy uh thinking a lot trying to focus yeah it's that type of time in life right now and honestly i don't even really care for drinking too much never really care for it too much anyway but now yeah even less i don't it's gotta be maybe a special occasion okay uh i learned so many things let me skip I don't know, this one I'll say. Uh, like, don't be scared to take small trips because it's easy to stay. It's easy to take small trips here. You can go somewhere for a weekend, go somewhere and, like, you know, maybe do a little hike, find a waterfall. Like, it's so much nature around here. And I want to explore more on my own. But, of course, first getting here. Girl, that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> so okay but yeah it's easy for um it's easy for you to take a small trip and do something fun or see a different whole different type of environment okay y'all see y'all it's crazy um yeah like i went to moshi and i want to go back to moshi next time i want to go biking i want to go do some agriculture tours i love all of that so it's like yeah you can do something just for the weekend or if you want to go to dar or something go to the mountains it's another area you can go to just take the bus just get on the bus just get on the bus they they go everywhere buses are running all around the country every day anytime almost and if you miss one company okay try another company i wish they had loyalty they should have some loyalty cards like after your 10th trip hello after your 10th trip with a specific bus line i feel like they should give you a discount like half or a free ride why not the bus is not always completely packed let me let's start a proposal maybe i should come up with my own proposal with a certain bus line that's a good incentive oh okay all right now and um yeah for health let's say the common health facilities are not the same I'm a black American. Welcome to the live. <laughs> the common health facilities are not the same as at home. Now, if you go to a place that's more private, like privately owned or something, yeah, but of course it's gonna cost you more. So if you just want something simple, like get your blood tested, get uh, even STD test, anything you wanna do, simple checkup. It's not expensive, it's cheap. But the like the standard of maybe cleanliness or the process that you used to it's not the same. 
you'll just have to pay a premium if you want something like better higher but still uh like luckily nothing happened to me while i was here oh east africa Woo. come in here i had no idea let's just say i had no idea what i was really getting up to that's what this live is about and everything everything i've been saying so far it was just a big shock i was shocked about everything yeah everything the let's say my first time traveling here okay it was to to nairobi and i did take a tour of kibera like one of the biggest slums in africa period i think it was like the second largest slum in africa okay i'm walking through there and i'm seeing some things and i'm learning like oh people don't have any bathrooms in their house they have to go share a share a shower at a at a place you pay for like you pay for the shower you pay for the toilet you pay for the water services there basically and they're living in homes that's like made out of metal um if they even have a home yeah just like okay the environment like is trash everywhere the government not keeping up with the space yeah i came and seen something like that but it's it can like that type of thing it can really vary like it can vary everywhere you go it can be like that like arusha you can find maybe something similar where people live just like that but it don't look the same because of the environment like okay arusha is so pretty it's mountains it's banana trees so a little bit more in nature but the idea is the same that okay people are without money or without uh certain utilities yeah things like that um so yeah i had to get used to seeing things like that uh yeah it's just a whole different place different environment different culture uh, everything shocking everything okay um yeah i was saying the standards of cleanliness are different not just at uh the doctor uh it could even be at restaurants or eating local food street food or just eating eating anywhere these uh nice mzungu restaurant it is not off limits because the people who work are the same the people are from here these you know maybe somebody who work at a nice place they're the same person i see walking down the street on a regular street you know and i would say my main pet peeve y'all are not gonna believe this my main pet peeve is how people will just freely walk down the road look at you dead in your face and be digging in their nose i don't know who said that was okay i don't know why this is a part of the culture maybe if somebody sees this live you know, they can explain to me why people think digging up their nose is just okay i don't know and it really gets to me if you see somebody do it and then you know they get on the uh they get on the dollar dollar right before you and you be like mm. you know everybody who get on after that person they touching it like excuse me i don't like it i don't like it i don't like it that's something i'll never rock with but i need an explanation uh, i'm telling you it's so me like it's still shocking to me when i see it like it's still shocking <laughs> when i see people just freely walking down the road just be like and then be like who said that was okay you see what i'm saying do y'all see what i'm saying just stuff be wild it's just really different here let me bring the camera down a little bit so, okay. all right um yeah that's that's my main one and then uh 
I really learned why people have the sprayer, like people have the sprayer in the bathroom, but really they said a nice place. You know, like a like a bidet spray. I love it so much. I don't ever want to go back to living my life without a bidet sprayer. If I go home, I need to install one. I need that. I really need that. But in other places, just local, like just calm like basic place not no foreigner prices nothing like that you're gonna get uh, a bucket of water and like a I don't know <laughs> it's like a wait wait why to which one which part let me know but yeah you'll get a bucket of water and then you'll get something that look like a measuring cup and you know for the life of me I still can't understand how it's done how how is it done? People use it to wash themselves, like especially the women's bathroom. I assume that maybe they put the water on their hand and then they wipe with the other hand. Like the left hand is, you know, that's the one people use to wipe and everything. Yeah. Wait, is it the right? I think it's the left. Yeah, I feel like it's the left hand that people use to wipe or whatever. But yeah, I still don't understand how to use the the cup thing. I I don't understand. I don't know. Oh, the bidet. Okay, so just imagine like a a, a water hose where it's just like, shh. or even when you washing your dishes, you know, you rinse the you can rinse the pot out or whatever. Okay, you just do that and then you spray it and you clean yourself and it's so clean, fresh and clean. And then when you use, you know, tissue, it's clear. It's basically clear because you already clean yourself with water. So I understand why people use water, but I don't like the idea of using my hand. Because now my hand dirty. So I'd rather just use a sprayer and then tissue. You clean. Perfectly clean. Nothing is... Yeah, tissue. Yeah, you spray and then you can just wipe with tissue. Now everybody don't wipe with tissue. Mm, easy to walk around in Tanzania. Mm, which part? I would say, like walking in Arusha, you're going to be walking on dirt road for the most part. The only part that's really paved is in the town, in the town area, that's paved. And even some parts of town, I noticed like, okay, it's regular roads and then one off. It's not paid. And walking on the main road, I really don't. That's not for me. I don't really like that. Some areas do have paving, but for the most part, no. And yeah, that's why I don't really like to walk unless it's on a side street. Yeah. And it's not good to be walking places where people don't know you, or at least for me. Not good for me to be walking everywhere because if some people are greeting me or trying to speak to me, they'll know that I don't speak Swahili after like 10 seconds. And then, you know, you don't know where you at. Like, if you don't know the area, you don't know the area. If nobody around there know you, good luck with that. But yeah, back to the cleanliness. Oh, coming back to Kenya. Hmm. I don't know. Um, I'm gonna let you in on a secret. I kind of have a feeling like it's just a feeling that I should go to Uganda. I don't know when, but I feel like that's next. Or if I ever need to leave Tanzania or something, I feel like I want to visit Uganda. I don't really want to be away from, like too far away from the coast, but still it's something like, I just had a feeling I should go to Uganda next and see things there. But yeah, back to this uh, this bathroom behavior. The same people who are serving you, you know, they bring you your food, bringing you your drinks, and then okay, you go in the bathroom, you see it ain't no tissue, it ain't no soap. What do you think they did when they went in there? And they gotta work there all day. You know, you gotta go to you gotta do number two at some point. So if they come out the bathroom, they took, I don't like really going to the bathroom too much in public. I just don't. 
because yeah that can be the situation no tissue no soap no water please i'm begging you if you have to go <laughs> number two while you in public please check and see if the water running first <laughs> Please check and see if there's running water in there. See if the toilet can flush. Because if you go and then nothing, it's gonna be real embarrassing when you gotta go out. I mean, don't ask me how I know. Okay, uh, there are squatting toilets. And yeah, I prefer squatting toilets. I'm a short person, so it's easier for me to do hey you already know eric eric you already know i know you know yeah i know you know too you say you in kenya <laughs> yeah okay squatting toilets i prefer those um i'm a short person and like a lot of times in women's bathrooms if the, if the toilet is high and it's like you have to kind of stand on your tippy toes so nothing touch you like you don't want the the toilet bowl to touch you at all so if you squat, perfect, everybody's equal. Everybody's equal. As long as there's space, cause I done been in some bathrooms, y'all. Oh my God. I done been in some bathrooms. I done went to the bathroom in the dark, in the dark. And I just pulled out my phone like, like, I don't know what's in here. Of course, it, I can't flush it to, I don't know what's going on, but anyway. Yeah, don't don't really be wearing sandals or like flip flops, like thong sandals, anything flat to the ground. Don't wear them in no public bathroom. Just don't, cause you can go in there and it's water all over the floor. Pee on your clothes. You won't pee on your clothes. But I'm gonna have to, maybe I should do a demonstration video another day. Uh, yeah, just squat. I pull my clothes like uh to the front. <laughs> I try. Are you from okay David, where are you from? If you from Florida, then you know Florida people they know how to get down. They be like get low, you squat, get low, you squat, you swing your arms like that. Wu Tang if you know how to Wu Tang, just get down like that and then maybe you can pee like that. <laughs> you won't get pee South Carolina. I maybe y'all know how to chicken wing or something. Get low you squat, Wu Tang, Chicken Wang. It's it's all similar. Uh yeah. So yeah, be careful with your shoes in the bathroom. Oh, another thing. Oh my god, I think I might have to do another live because I realize just how many I got. I got a lot of a lot of things I learned. And there's even more if I just talk, 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 talk. I can talk too much about this stuff because there's so many random things about living here. It's hard to even curate a video because there's so many side stories and, you know. Okay, uh, yeah, a random one is you are everybody's dada sister in Swahili. You are everybody's dada when you come here. I like, I like both. I like both America and Africa. You see here, I get to every, it's like the same thing in the US, at least in the black community. In the black community, I'm everybody sis. Hey sis. Yeah, hey dada, you know, everybody is just like more, it make you feel like a part of the community. Like they say dada, dada. Or uh, shoot, they say something else I can't think of right now. But yeah, uh, you know, first when I came here, I'm like, are they talking to me? You know, how would I know that they're even talking to me? But yeah, if you hear it, just turn around. They could be mentioning you. They could be mentioning like, oh, maybe your, maybe your shirt is up. Uh, maybe something falling out your pocket. You know, it could just be anything. But it's just very, I feel like a good welcome into the community. I like it. Hey sis, sister. Um oh yeah. You should get rid of your uh your qualms with personal space. 
if you have an issue with personal space you're not gonna make it you're not gonna make it people can be bunched up in any place like in the market people going around you just too don't nobody care about bumping into you like it's not a big deal but that that's one thing i do like about it yeah thank you augustino you get to be my caca or caca caca i heard so many different pronunciations um what was i saying yeah personal space it's not a thing You'll have to get over it when you come here. But luckily, you know, I don't, I was never like that anyway. Like somebody can bump into you and at home it's the expectation that they say like, oh, I'm sorry, excuse me, immediately. Just because people are always so quick for with the threat of violence. If you like accidentally bump into them, you may not have even really noticed, but then at home you met with such animosity such animosity like why it couldn't just be a mistake you know but here you know it, it really can just be an accident it's a lot of things to be looking around for out here you look here looking there you trying not to uh get ran over by a boat about it if you take one step like shoot that was about to go ahead you know so maybe you do step back into somebody it's an accident sorry or just trying to maneuver sorry or somebody somebody pull me and it's chill and some people they may not say it because they just did not notice you i am short i am nobody people look directly over me like you may feel like somebody see you they don't even see you let's be for real um but yeah maybe i should get more into the good things i think i have more yeah it's very relaxed here like i don't know y'all can't see but there's nothing going on like in arusha there is nothing going on like every day that's why if you see me on any videos i'm chilling i don't have any i don't have no like big crazy energy there's it's just too relaxed for that i can't even muster like there's not even any problems if the power go out i'm chill like the water go out i'm chill I'm like, okay i'm gonna just wait you know we kind of just wait maybe sometimes i can wish like oh i hope the power come back on so i can cook dinner or something but like cook dinner the easy way with the lights on but even if it go out i mean i'm gonna still cook okay put the phones up put the phone lights up and then just get to it that way and you will still enjoy your meal like it's just peaceful like you can hear kids playing outside uh hear the birds in the morning if you go to town it could be like a little bit busy some in some areas but even then you realize okay it's only like that in town in town is such a small place people go there for business but if you sit around there you'll see oh it's really slow like it's slow on the street actually maybe people just passing by trying to get to the next place or the bus station can be busy like that's a place that seems so busy when you run into it but okay next block over i wish a chill place like nothing going on here that's all i can say nothing is going on here maybe y'all can hear the birds right here maybe y'all can hear the kids playing over there like I'm relaxed and it's really good because I wake up and there's nothing uh, taking my attention exactly like whenever I go to a trip or if I was maybe visiting Nairobi or something oh I'd be happy to come back to Arusha because Nairobi can be overstimulating oh, my phone on like 20 okay we good uh, yeah Nairobi can be overstimulating it can you know i'm seeing things here and there like maybe i meet people and they say um okay yeah uh yeah it's nice to meet you i'm gonna invite you out here and then they actually do like they actually do invite you out it's like well shoot if you keep going out you're gonna keep meeting people and you'll never be in the house you'll never be saving money you'll never be focused on <laughs> on what you got going on 
but in Arusha, it's so I'm able to focus here and I'm able to uh oh I missed the message yeah I'm just able to really be focused here I'm from Georgia Augustino nice to meet you yes you did you already try Nairobi or did you go straight to Melindy I think like I know your name and are you the one that moved in April like, are, you, are you the one that just moved or was that another lady um, yeah basically like when I came here I took so much time to rest just because I could like I don't know how many days I just slept when I came here like other than going out to find something to eat and even like especially power went out first times I came here I was just like oh I guess maybe I'll just go to sleep like rest or mm, like just deep like just get everything off your mind and then relax into the calm like Arusha really allow you to do that and I know it's not just Arusha like any place you go to it's so easy to just chill out it's really peaceful here yeah very peaceful and i wish it was similar in oh good he gone the man that was blowing the nose uh yeah i know it's places you can do that in the u.s also but the thing is it's that it make you dependent on a car and it make you like you really far out from people so you very isolated if you're living in the country and trying to get that same feel but here like if you live in any neighborhood around arusha okay you can you can interact with people easy you can go out on a walk you can still have some type of maybe like social interactions you're not isolated here and things are accessible like food is accessible but if you live in a country in the u.s <laughs> what can you do like food a store like a supermarket that you may need far away far away so it's just like a whole different experience like the country in the u.s and then living here it just yeah agriculture being real big here and in the way homes neighborhoods society is set up it's easier to do something like that here dang i don't know why this thing is short okay yeah okay yeah you gotta tell us how your first month yeah, tell us how everything went because you might want to look back and document how far you came look at me now and then you'll see like look at you now mm -hmm. beach town that's real nice if i ever visit my lady, i will hit you up and yeah uh, i wanted to go there before but i didn't feel like uh Ooh, you know it's hot my boss it's hot it's hot where you at you know so to be moving around too much it just really drained me okay from kenya living in the states okay nairobi put your key flags up put your key flags up uh yeah Ooh, yeah you probably went to that uh that cultural heritage museum or that national I don't know national museum something like that i know where it's at but i never been to either i'm glad you liked it yeah because you see arusha just real cool and chill um it's like i don't know what kind of place i can say is similar to but i just know i like mountain yeah i just know i like like mountain type towns and yeah arusha like medellin this one and then other places like when i was living in atlanta like maybe i would want to go to tennessee like i visited chattanooga with my friends and then like did north georgia you know just that type of vibe i really like that vibe for my 
you know, just for my general vibe, like that's me. But yeah, definitely vacationing at the beach. It's nice. And yeah, vacationing in the city too, that's nice. Last time I lived in the city was Atlanta. Atlanta. Oh, do you miss Nairobi? That's the real question. And when you move from Nairobi, where did you move to in Texas? Oh, another thing about Arusha, uh, living in Tanzania. Tanzania is not a big place for expats, I'll say. Like, if I'm gonna see an expat somewhere, I mainly see European, like German, Dutch. I think it mainly be like German and Dutch. Maybe from the UK. Maybe. Places like that. Um, I'm sure it's got something to do with colonization and how they people was over here. Um, I think it's like Italians here. Same for Kenya. I'm sure you've seen in Kenya too, like Italians or whatever. Yeah. So yeah, basically, um, yeah, I don't see that many black expats here. If they ever come across this video, maybe they can hit me up. But I only met like one lady and then I met another family here. But I was introduced to that family by somebody doing like tourism. They was like, oh yeah, they black American. I'm like, what? Well, yeah, I love to meet them. Because I don't know anybody. I don't know if they're here. Austin, yeah. See, that's cool. I'm glad you moved to Austin. I think you can get to some cool places from there or like you see the little rodeo rodeo culture um different landscapes i mean sure it might be similar to different parts of kia what do you think i've never been to texas so i can't say um yeah georgia you said kennesaw let me look at this thing again yeah Marietta, Kennesaw, real green, real green, similar to like Arusha weather, Arusha vibes, and yeah, there was this one show actually on Netflix, that's how I was even introduced to like, oh, Austin got a little vibe, Austin is a, a little destination out there, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, when I seen that Chinese market, in Nairobi, I ain't going there. Maybe I should have. It would have been fun. But when I say, I say, oh, y'all got a whole, y'all got a whole thing going on over here. Wow. But I started to see more Asian people here. See more Asian people here too. And I know they're trying to bring them in for tourism. But child, that's another conversation for another day. So, hmm. Okay, actually, I think I can finish this list. Okay. Like, hey. Yeah, I think I can finish this list. Uh, things I learned, like if you're moving to Tanzania, or if, even if you're moving to Kenya, anywhere around Africa, I'm sure this applies. I say do Airbnb for one to three months max while you like get acclimated and figure out maybe what area you want to live in you can move like to different places for the first three months one month and do your research don't just be moving willy-nilly yeah do that and then go ahead and get your place and furnish it really if you did research before you might be able to do it and furnish it in like that by that second month and that way you'll be saving it. big rag big money big lotto <laughs> yeah you can save a lot of money that way i i realized that when i found out just how much people were paying for rent here i said oh yeah if i knew if i knew then what i knew now i would have just come here with a totally different plan would have had a big plan for maybe making money faster than you know than anything else 
So yeah, you can easily furnish a place for the same amount that you like paying for an Airbnb for. Don't waste too much money on Airbnb. Now, if you don't have a plan like me, like I didn't have a real plan. The only idea was that, okay, maybe I'll stay in Tanzania three months and maybe I'll go to Kenya. That was the only plan I had. So I never had the intentions of furnishing a place. But yeah, now I know like it would have been better to just, just even it would have just had a home base like just a home base here and if i feel like going to kenya for a month just go there for a month and then keep my place here so that way when i come back i'm not looking crazy like oh man i don't moved all my things like now i gotta find a new place and learn a new area not good people who move their family with children in the area how is the community set up hold up this is a long question let me read let me read yes yes You'll have a better idea for investments if you come here, you know, knowing more. So it all will come with time. If you never came before, then you'll be just like me, like not knowing. You really don't know some stuff until you just come. Okay, my sister said, do you know people who move their family with children in the area? Or how is the community set up for families to be successful? Now, this is out of my range. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know any families that move here with like young kids. The family that I met here, all of their kids are like my age, they grown. So I don't really know about that, but I know if you move here with a family, you can put your kids in international school. Uh, I think it's better if you have them learn Swahili, try to teach them that. So they can connect with other children even outside of the international school because kids are kids they see other kids they want to talk to them and play with them so just set your children up for success here and then you gotta set yourself up for success first so do their research learn some things learn the culture uh families to be successful Woo maybe somebody else got like a little relocation service relocation plan i could i could only help somebody even so much i don't that's why i don't offer no services or nothing like that i'm still trying to figure some things out myself so like i know how you can come here and find a place that's all i know come here and find a place uh with a decent yard uh but even here, it's not exactly the, like, it's a good place for a family in the sense that your kids can kind of be free, kind of be free and focused, like, on their schoolwork, or maybe just hang out with each other, have friends. Uh, but, yeah, there's not, like, so many things to do. It would be better if, maybe if there's, like, another Tanzanian family who can kind of be your your welcoming committee if they similar to you yeah definitely if it's Tanzanian family similar to your family set up I think that would be good or even if they have older kids and you have some younger kids that's good too because they can tell you how they raise their kids in in the society oh I know my nephew would have fun here that's what i always think that like he would have so much fun like he could just go out and be free he can go play mm. yeah international international schools yeah definitely have i think a host like family a host family you know know some expats and know some good local people around and that'll be an easier family move Cause moving even with just one person you gotta keep up i gotta keep up with myself but if i was moving here and trying to keep up with like oh like okay i need this for my kids like that's a whole different set of needs be different like so different and then even transportation i'd be thinking about that like oh if i had a baby here or something i'm not having no baby here without having a car or without knowing how to drive and you know being able to just understand different things about the culture and everything i would never do that because i don't want to put my baby on a boat my baby on a boat like i'm wild enough to be on the boat of myself 
<laughs> but like me because i see it all the time uh yeah i see it all the time like uh people have their baby sitting on the front of a boat uh, and you know they riding with their dad or something or a boater man maybe picking some kids up and taking them home and i'd be like ooh, the baby's just holding on like if they hit a turn or something the baby gonna slide off I be thinking that all the time, but it is what it is. It's just a part of life here. Um, and yeah, like like Augustino was saying, like you'll probably find more. It'll be easier to probably make friends in in Kenya or in Nairobi. I'm not gonna lie. Like I feel look, maybe depending on what your values are, depending on what your values are, I think. Or like what type of family you have or what type of style, what kind of vibe you feel your family got. Maybe Nairobi would be better for some things and easier to connect with people because I feel like they can be similar to us as black Americans as far as like, I don't know, kind of being progressive. Yeah, I think kind of being progressive and ways of thinking like, okay, maybe they be on their business, like they about business only, they not on nothing else like they just really focusing on building something doing well like coming into the future and having yeah just put positive positive things that they into same for tanzania but if you're looking for slow life i would say if you're looking for slow life come to tanzania or if you're looking to just have your you can come and have your land here you can come and you have your kids doing a national school and then they can even go live wherever they want to live after that you know but as for you like the building blocks of your family your foundation okay you want your kids to have land here and you want them to be able to live maybe in the u.s and here if they want to if they so choose then yeah you can come and set up your life here same for me like yeah if i wanted to live here and start a family here okay I, I would have to meet a man for here as far as uh like getting getting citizenship quicker or if i got married here that make it easier but yeah if i want land i want a house here i want a family where we can live slow not be stressed about too much just focus on business and enjoying each other time yeah if that's the life do you like tanzania real easy for that um average cost of living for homes Hmm. Like maybe I can give you the cost of rent. The cost of rent maybe it could be like four hundred dollars a month for a house unfurnished. Yeah, like maybe three bedroom, three bedroom house in the compound, standalone, whatever things like that. Maybe four hundred dollars a month around Arusha, and I'm sure it's less. Maybe it's even less in Moshi. Um, most, I feel like they both, I'm sure both have some nice houses, but the way Moshi looks so green, I'm like, ooh, what, just a house out there? Beautiful, just beautiful, but Moshi is even smaller than here, so I wouldn't really see myself living, like living, living in Moshi. It might be too small. Um... So yeah, another thing, living in Tanzania. I'm, I, am I dragging it, y'all? Should I? <laughs> is this live too long? Uh, yeah, one thing you should do is find a good salon. You have to find a good salon. Don't just go anywhere on the street. Don't even just go anywhere in town that's okay doing here. You see a sign that say natural hair, rasta, braids, blah, blah, blah. Don't just go in there because when you see the shampoo that they about to put on your head, you gonna be like, oh, this is, who had y'all washing? Who it, like, it look like y'all about to pour this stuff on the floor. Like, this is industrial. This is floor cleaner. And you wanna put that in my head. I think I got my hair washed with that shampoo and it's common at like all the salons. I think I got it washed a few times. And after the last time I said no more <laughs> because Y'all got my hair dry, like real dry. And then you trying to blow it out after that? No. 
So find a good, like, if you got natural hair, good natural hair salon. I can't speak for barbers. Um, like, I don't know how clean they are. I don't know if they try to, like, how many styles they do. But um, if y'all seen, like, Alan on my videos before, Alan would say, oh, in Dar Salaam, uh, they always have, like, more stylish like more modern barbers who gonna give you more styles or whatever but when he went to one in arusha it's like okay it's just this one barber basically he feel it like maybe he feeling himself he might just be one of the most talented ones in arusha and okay maybe he charging more of a premium but in dar a bigger city they are dime a dozen so it's like mm. alan is good i miss alan he and Dar, so if I go to Dar, then I'll see him again. Or if he ever visit here, maybe y'all will see him in another video here. Um, yeah, people are nice here. Okay, you know I said a lot of things about Tanzania and meeting people here and living here, but I didn't mention how nice people are. People really be so nice, uh, welcoming. Uh, I even see it a lot of time if they even don't know English I can see the look in their face they like oh they really want to communicate with me or at least for maybe if it's a, a girl that's seemingly around my age they seem more excited like they really want to talk but if it's a language barrier I'd be so sorry so all I can do is smile back but families like my family will welcome you so fast okay you come in hello how are you welcome like leave your shoes at the door here's some chai here's some chapati would you like some indizi mama would you like uh like would you like anything like anything they're ready to give it to you uh if you a guest you know it, it can be the same mm, I, I wanted to say it can be the same for the u.s as in like if you somebody guests like they can lay out a lot of things for you but it's not on the same level like you come in somebody's house here it don't matter like they could be rich or not rich like, you get the same hospitality just a big welcome mm -hmm. like real personal you know they want to sit down and talk to you and you just sit there with your child and now me i be so quiet i be feeling like oh my god i feel like i'm gonna be rude but I, uh sometimes i just don't know what to say or, you know, if I have questions, maybe I ask questions, but I don't want it to be, you know, just asking questions. Like, I'd rather be normal. Like, we just talk about normal things. Uh, but, yeah, very grateful for everybody who welcomed me here. Uh, anybody who welcomed me here, just thank them. I appreciate them. People will try to make sure you safe. People be worried about your safety. Uh, just worry about everything they want to check in on you mm -hmm. you could have even only met them one time same hospitality uh, another big thing is oh my god food is so good in Tanzania y'all see Tanzania got me in a, <laughs> a chokehold Tanzania got a chokehold on me because the food is just so good. Like, uh, let's say my favorites may be pilau. I love the salad here, kachumbari here. Um, mishkaki, little mishkaki. I love, I think I said Nizinyama already. What else do I love? Chapati, the tea. Uh, just everything everything is so good i think i have more i was about to say masala fries but i had that more in nairobi but i know it's also a thing on the coast like even you know, mabasa or it's more there but like just some good swahili food like the rice bean yeah them coconut beans coconut rice uh any type of stew like uh roasty whatever all of those things all I like to do is eat. Y'all should know. Chips, chips, my eye. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, really, I prefer a little more my eye than, than chips, but it is what it is.
if somebody make it real good, it's just good. And yeah, food is just so fresh here. It's in abundance. It's everywhere. I'm listen. You already know. You already know, Augustina. Now I hate to be saying this, but okay, when I go to Kenya, I be like, I miss the food from Tanzania. I miss the food. I miss the food. But I, I think maybe some dishes in Kenya, maybe some. I can't speak on it. I just can't speak on it too much because whenever I'm in Nairobi, like since I was coming from here, I was looking for more options. Like Arusha don't have a lot of options, so. When I was in Nairobi, I wanted to be like, okay, yeah, I can get me some Turkish food today in Nairobi. I can get American. I can get this. I can get all these kind of foods while I'm in Nairobi. But when I get back to Arusha, Tanzania, whatever, then, okay, I get back to my local food. But yeah, the food be real doggone good. They train me up, right? Whenever somebody tried my food, they be like, I like the way you cook. And I said, well, you know, I learned from y'all basically because any dish i made from here i just go off the taste of like okay other people's food like did i try it at a restaurant on the street anywhere like that and i try to recreate it as close as i can so sometimes i ask questions like okay so what you put in this like when i tried the curry at the last hotel i was at, i said hmm what did you put i knew i said you got uh I knew he put something. Like, I know you put coconut. I know you got this. I know you got that. He was like, yep, a little bit, a little bit. I said, go and give him that recipe. Yeah, exactly. See, you already know the international food. So, yeah, I get pulled into that more. I'm like, ooh, I miss this. I miss that. Yeah, when I'm really missing huh, Nairobi, I just eat everything I can because I can find it. Mm. Ooh, let's see. Oh yeah, and that uh, if you try food in Tanzania at a local place, the food is always better. If you try it from a fancy restaurant, it just don't be that good. I don't know why. I don't know why. Um, random things are. There's a lot of dirt roads and rough roads around Tanzania. It just is like that. Most of the roads are unpaved. Most are unpaved. The main road is the road that is. And then off that dirt, like dirt, dirt for miles, dirt and grass. Um, there's trash service here but you know i tell my sisters this random stuff all the time I be like y'all just won't believe some of the stuff i see living here how in the world are people supposed to know that the trash truck is coming at any day anytime it comes any day like thursday through saturday it comes like that but it don't you don't know what day all you know is you need to be at home and you need to be be able to hear the whistle because they come through and they um they blow a whistle like like it's a little high pitch and i'd be like how, how do people even hear that because i see them carrying their trash in the street i'm like if i had music playing i don't even know if i would have heard that but i guess when you attuned to something here or maybe i don't know maybe somebody up on the front of the street could be texting them like oh yeah the trash truck here via via yeah i i haven't went to a party at via via but i went to the thing the festac festival they said this year they having it in right next time they having it in kisumu yeah so the festac festival it was like about culture arts around the continent and then people can come and perform or whatever i only went to one night but Via Via, yeah, it seemed like a cool place. And I went to a movie night there before. Uh, but yeah, there is no, uh, you don't get a trash can. You don't get, like, I think I might have to make a whole nother video about, like, just random things you should know in order to live here. Uh, like, fly, okay, flies and nets are a thing. Thank you, Rock. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. 
to I'll be like, ain't no way. I'm putting all this work in. But I don't know. I think it just uh I know you couldn't believe it. But I think it's just um maybe people's lack of interest in Tanzania specifically or the lack of interest in Africa as a destination. But I think if they knew if they really knew then maybe they would be more tuned in or actually like looking for these things most people i see come here are europeans or like indian or uh asian those are the most tourists i see here americans i can be out i rarely hear rarely hear american accent like just not so much Oh yeah, I was saying flies and nets are a thing. I mean, for one, yes, the food is real and it's fresh and the food will go bad like quickly. But yeah, they just be around. Uh, it be kind of warm in the houses. So if you got any food, it can go bad fast. Yeah. Okay, the question. Yeah, I'm a digital nomad. Yeah, you got, look, I don't even have a tip for real. The only thing I have is to just have some money. If you want to start out, just leave wherever you're leaving with a good amount of money saved up. And then uh, make sure you can get that income coming in in any kind of way. In any kind of way, yeah. You might have to get creative. If you have any skills, try to leverage them. But of course, see how strict immigration is. Like, are they really checking on your activities? Like, are they trying to check and see if you made any money while in their country? You know, it just depends. It depends. But it's better to have income definitely from something. Oh, sorry. I thought something was in my shoe. Okay, yeah, definitely it's better to have income from a like if you a vet or something yeah exactly you got it exactly right but yeah it's come with money like if you're a retired veteran or if you have like a stability check something like that is better more, more secure anything secure retirement whatever because it's not very expensive to live here not very expensive at all especially if you stand in one spot and stand in the house you your money will go a long way um and yeah most people know about everybody want to go to ghana or go to nigeria i personally didn't want to go there because the food is so spicy and it's like a similar problem i had when i was in mexico I'm like, okay, everywhere I go, it's like, it's a struggle to eat. And I don't like no struggle to eat. So for my diet, I cannot eat spicy foods. And I just don't want them kind of problems. Maybe I could go there to visit, but living long term, that means most times I have to cook my own food. I can't like cheat. I can't really cheat and go out to any local place and know that, okay, the food is good for me. I'm not about to be sick in the bathroom or nothing like that. Um... Yeah, I would say the main part is the food, and then maybe not for Ghana, but for Nigeria, um, safety. As a sole person, a solo woman, and yeah, I just, mm. oh, as a U.S. citizen, you get a multi-entry visa and you have to leave every three months or that you hear this for me but maybe you can, uh, maybe you can try to pay somebody i think that's called bribery so i wouldn't promote that but you know what i mean uh the stores okay yes yeah, stores they don't have everything you need and a lot of things are expensive that you know can be a little bit less at home of course that's everywhere it's uh imported so cheese is one cheese is so expensive here i the only time i really eat cheese in my diet is if it's on pizza and another thing is the most common cheese i see here is mozzarella so if you're looking for cheddar it's uh mm, mm. 
girl. Let me let me clip that out. <laughs> uh uh. I don't want nobody for immigration on my case. But okay, yeah. Cereal is expensive. And a lot of other random things can be more expensive than they should be. And honestly, some things I saw them in Nairobi. I'm like, hmm, why is it cheaper here even than there? Like an imported item or whatever. So I don't know if it's because of the the maybe connections that they have with certain countries i know kenya is a little bit more i feel like kenya a little bit more connected in the international realm uh okay yeah this the last note i got i think is that chickens run around everywhere like agriculture is a big thing people can have chickens anybody can have chickens like at every house so why not why buy eggs? We eat eggs so much here. Shoot, I need to get one. If I had just one chicken, I'll save like a couple dollars a week, maybe. Maybe a dollar a week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but chickens run around here. Dogs run around. Goats run around. Kids run around. Like, it's just, if you walk down the street, you'd be like, what's going on here? Like, but it's really just normal life normal life everybody coexisting in peace the dogs not running after nobody the chickens the, the roosters not running after nobody everybody just home cars people like you'll get used to it if you come here and you'll blend in blend into the neighborhood into the space yeah yeah this live has almost been two hours oh my god do we have any more questions because i got to the end of my list but i'm sure i can talk 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 yep 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 mm, random loud sessions oh yeah like if you live by a church hmm. so there's a lady on tiktok her name is uh something mercy mercy i don't know something mercy travels i don't know something like that everywhere she goes i don't know but she was like oh yeah first time i complained about loudness in my near my house she was like yeah you got to be careful about like a church or whatever ask around or try to look around before she's like okay is there any church around here before you decide that you want to live somewhere because a church is just into the culture here they're loud and they've probably been there forever and they're not moving and it's nothing you could say to get these people to like <laughs> tone it down a little bit oh my god y'all i hate my lighting is this is better um yeah tanzania i try to learn swahili but it's really just going very slow but it's better if I practice. I try to just practice my interactions or if I have something to say to somebody, you know, I can try to use translate and then remember for the next time, remember this for the next time. But like, okay, ordering food. Yeah, I kind of know how to order food. Um, sure, I haven't even asked for directions too much, but I just noticed if I'm not interacting with local people, for a certain amount of time or using the Swahili that I do learn or have learned, then it already is starting to go right back down. Like if I've been in the house too long and I come outside and I'll be like, uh, you know, I'll be kind of stuck. Like, yeah, so it's better to stay up on Swahili. I kind of just, you know, I do a lot of acting. I tell everybody this all the time. Like I just do a lot of acting. Like luckily I'm black here and i can just blend in and yeah you could just play off a lot of situations just be like um you know you just be like mm. if somebody asks you what about this like do you want this you can just be like mm. like you might want to say oh no i don't want this one it's too small or, i don't want this thing it's not the right fit for me you could just be like mm. Just be like, mm -mm. okay, this who trying to sell you something, they be quick to try to sell something anyway. They're gonna bring you many different things, so it's just playing a lot of stuff off. Or if you know where you're going, then if you're taking like a dollar dollar, try and like just know the name of your stop 
and just research as much as you can or call somebody if you're going somewhere like a, a restaurant or maybe meeting a friend and let them tell you okay this is the stop you gotta get off at and you know just maneuver it that way just be educated try to be educated and do research on different things and translate yeah now sadly for finally translate do not be hitting like you need to a lot of the time but it can be enough mm -hmm. but for most things I try to have somebody with me, somebody to know Swahili, like my sister said there in the chat. That's the best you can do because they know like, you know, they know people tone, they know people intention, they know, you know if somebody trying to overcharge me for something. Yeah. But it's not, it's not easy getting around without Swahili, you know. Mm -mm. I stick to the places I'm used to. I'm too flyny. People. What's flyny? I'm too is people. So what's flyny? Yeah, this is my first live. What do y'all think? Should I be doing more lives? I think I like this better than uh y'all don't understand. When I make videos, how many times I retake the video? Because me, I'm a notes person. Do you see this? I can have a whole script or something. Especially if I want to make sure I got all information to you so i could be doing retake retake and then by the time i did all that child could have just got on live i could just got on live and gave it to you just like this and answer any quick questions do, 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 do. but either way you know oh sorry this is like a dragonfly they just flew down uh, how long did it take oh prices okay the first thing the first thing on prices the first things i learned was about food because that was the main thing i needed to buy first i didn't even need to buy anything else you know you come with certain things that you travel with like uh lotion or deodorant because it's my favorite brand or whatever i came with certain things uh but food yeah i just had to oh okay so I just had somebody like go down my grocery list with me and they told me about the range of like how much something should cost. Now of course it depends on like the size of a thing. Like okay a small avocado maybe it can cost 500 maybe a bigger one can cost more maybe. But same thing for tomatoes or onions, potatoes, big ones can cost more than small ones or you won't know the price for uh yeah like if you say okay i want six potatoes and maybe your friend told you okay yeah they like 500 each but then when you go to buy a bucket it's like oops you don't know the price for a bucket so as long as you know the price for one you can just play it off and try to count the potatoes maybe okay it should be something like that or maybe they'll be giving you a discount for buying a bucket worth but yeah, it kind of go like that. Just have somebody kind of teach you prices real quick. Or another thing you could do is if you have a trusted person that's like maybe recommended to you, maybe they can do some of your shopping for you. And as long as you're very clear on your list, it helps if they understand some English. But even if they don't, okay, that just means you got to get up on your Swahili and be able to tell them like, okay, I want a big avocado. Or I want an avocado that's not ripe yet, like it's not ready. Like I don't even know how to say that. I'm gonna be honest, but seal, seal tayari, like a, a avocado parachichi, me the parachichi, me seal, seal tayari. I don't know, something like that. Like it's it's a little bit my pema early, not ready yet. So maybe you could just try your best with that. Oh, was there another question? I think. But yeah, it's so many, so many things that you'll learn. I mean, even if somebody overcharge you for real, it's not going to break the bank. Somebody overcharge, it's not going to break the bank for you. Maybe it's giving them something. It might be giving them something a little extra for the day. But 
it's not really taking nothing out your pocket for real because remember you have usd if, especially if you have us dollars coming in consistently them charge you an extra thousand that's 50 cent like 50 cent that's really it yeah thank you i've tried i try y'all never see me struggling speaking swahili not really i clipped that out of all the videos or I don't know not that i clip it out but it's just really not in there or anything important for the most part so a few of y'all are moving here when 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 is this something that y'all planned out like for a year now or is it something that's new to you my summer oh you coming soon which part which part you want to come to arusha dar i don't suggest moving to zanzibar i just don't maybe for a little trip maybe just go for vacation real quick but you know a place that might be slept on oh been in place for two years yes welcome kenya yeah it's, it's good to start in Kenya. Definitely. You'll know, like, yes, it's a place you can go where some things are easy. Yeah. I love Kenya too. It's just so easy to go around, it's so easy to meet people. It's just real. It's just nice. But definitely, like, fast. Kenya in general, even in the places that's slow, it's still faster than anywhere in Tanzania to me even Dar es Salaam if whenever I went to Dar I'm like this is a big city no it ain't got that city vibe like not like uh, Nairobi do that's what I expect when I say city or when I think city oh y'all these mosquitoes eating me up I'm on the one part of my body that's out my my ankle no would you believe i have never met um anybody from youtube here never but actually one day y'all oh yes okay the time i was in dar i went to this club in masaki and it was just so random i was walking through with my friend and i saw the guy that traveling sister did a video with his name was like bigs big something like that but he was like a tall light-skinned man i don't know a little bit older maybe not old but just like older than me and i'm like oh i know him so i just waved or whatever like he probably i don't know just nothing i didn't like introduce myself or anything it's the club just the club just walking through yeah that's the only person i met from like youtube I don't know who even who else even live here currently. I don't know. It's crazy that I never met any of them. Like Arusha is small, so I expected to run across somebody by now. And maybe they see me and they don't know me yet. But even then, I don't be outside like that. Y'all might see me outside on a video, but that's because I went outside to film a video. <laughs> I be in the house more now. Yeah, definitely be in the house. I think even when I was, yeah, even when I was in Kisumu, um, I was inside a little bit. I was a little bit tired, so that's why I have too much content from here. Just enough. Let me see. All right, you're welcome ask me anything i might have to get out of here too it's a dragonfly it's mosquitoes i'm not no night person let me go home pack my pizza up so thank y'all i need to go wash my feet before it get worse with the itching okay uh any more questions before i go though oh yeah and i was going to say before somebody distracted me uh mwanza Mwanza is a little bit, it could be a little bit slipped on. Yeah. So if I go there, I'll share with y'all. And yeah.
so thank you to everybody for joining the live i'm happy it helped i'm happy you're here this is my first live how did i do i feel like i'm talking too much and actually i might just need to stop eating it my mouth is dry i ate pizza and <laughs> i didn't order enough to drink yet just do 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 so uh, maybe I'll do another one soon. Catch me on the next one. Bye. I don't know how to end the live, Lord. Here. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's real good. Okay. <laughs> Bye. I figured out how to end it.